Hey everybody, Bob Maddox, your crazy rocket man here. Um, I want to thank everybody out there that has been watching my videos. In the last 28 days, I've got 15 million views and that has generated um, enough revenue for me to possibly start doing this uh, full time. That's what I'm going to try to do anyway. So I hope you enjoy watching my videos as much as I enjoy making my machines and going out and uh, video them for you out on the desert. Uh, so thank you very much. I hope you will, will keep watching and make sure to like, share, and subscribe, of course. Uh, so let's, uh, let's see what the next greatest fabulous thing is here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. It's my 270-pound thrust Maddox Jets Dragon cart. It's got a Dragon motor in it. It's my Maddox Jets Dragon engine. That is a valved pulse jet engine. Now my other valveless uh, engines that you saw, like um, the Beast Cart, made 110 pounds of thrust, ran on propane and uh, diesel. This is a valved engine, weighs about the same, only makes 270 pounds of thrust, runs on gasoline. And uh, so let's kind of go over the cart and kind of show you how everything works. And then uh, I will, um, I'll describe how the pulse jet engine works. It's a, it's a reaction engine. So first of all, I have a, a full roll cage in this one. It's actually the first cage, fully caged thing I've done for quite a while. I did a land speed car one time that was caged. Um, but I wanna do a big shout out to um, Pat and Adam at Rogue Metals. They donated all the metal in my chassis here. Thanks so much to them. They, uh, they just donated it because they just want to be part of the fun. <laughs> so uh, I really, uh, that really helps out a ton, really helps a ton. So, um, so it's quarter inch wall, or quarter inch tubing. It's uh, 095 wall, which is a little bit heavy for something like this, but uh, works, out, works out really great. I have a tubing bender to do the, the bends here. It's sitting over here. Now, um, most of my career in building things, I just, bent the tubes with a, with a big torch instead of having a tubing bender, but it is really nice to have a, have a bender. And I have a notcher that does my notches here. Some of them are still done by hand. Uh, as you can see, I just have a you know pretty small shop, my underground lair, most of it's underground. Um, just real basic tools. Here's my uh, snap-on tools that I got for doing the Monster Garage show with Jesse James. Had a great time, had a successful show, won the tools, made the biggest pulse jet engine in the world. Made a lot of good friends, including Jesse James. Um, just basic tools. Um, got a, just got a new welder recently, so that was, that was really nice. A uh, little uh, plasma torch. This is a roller that I roll all my tubes with. Um, all these all these tubes here. This is a cone Most uh, pulse jets have cones of some kind and that cone started out as just that sheet metal right there and I Run everything through this roller this hand roller. It's two feet long and uh, So I just roll those up and then uh, I have a bunch of clamps underneath when I put tubes together I have a big series of clamps that I clamp around them and there's little holes in the side so you can uh, do your tax for your welding. So pretty basic tools. Um, a lot of cutting and grinding. I don't really, uh, I don't really draw pictures and stuff of my, um, what I'm planning to do. I just, I just start cutting. <laughs> just get an idea and start cutting. I build the engine first, bend it the way I want it, and then uh, build a cart around it. So the way this works is. A uh, valved pulse jet engine has to have air to start it. You have to blow air in it, either with some kind of a big blower or compressed air. Now, a big engine like this, you need compressed air because you just, you'd just have to have too many blowers, to uh, leaf blowers to do it. So right down here is a seven gallon aluminum air storage tank. I'll charge it with 125 PSI. See, I got a quick disconnect here. And then it comes out of here and it goes into the solenoid. So when I push a button, it opens this solenoid and that shoots air into the engine. Let me, let me touch it off right here real quick. Listen to this. So that's pretty loud. That's blowing air. Air goes down that line, up into here, 
up into this distributor, and then up into the engine. And then my fuel pumps, there's three fuel pumps down there. And the way that works is the three fuel pumps go into this one bar. And then on one end of the bar, the fuel comes out and goes to the engine. And on the other side of the bar, I've got a ball valve. And what that does is it re lets the fuel return to the tank. Now, when, to start the engine, I'll let some of the fuel return to the tank. And then that gives enough to the engine to start and idle. And then when I push down the gas pedal, it moves this ball valve and closes the return to the tank. And that forces all the gasoline to the engine. And then it goes up to full throttle. So it's just like a, just like pushing your foot down on the gas pedal of your car. And so you don't want to be, the, the engine's not a rocket. It, it has throttle and you can turn it off, you can turn it on. Uh, you don't want to be out there with something that's not controllable. So that's how, that's how we start it with the compressed air. And then uh, the fuel tank's up here. It's a five gallon fuel tank. Now a big motor like this will go through that five gallons in, in four or five minutes. So uh, it doesn't, doesn't, have a, doesn't have a lot of time. I could put you know, a lot bigger tanks on and, and uh, go a lot further, but don't really need to. So let's come around here. So here's my steering. So everything's really tight on this, of course. And I've got a great big motor that's going right down between my legs. And so there's not a lot of room for the steering. And of course I have to do everything on a budget. So um, I made these uh, bearing blocks here. It's just a piece of tubing with a, just a cheap bearing stuffed in both ends. Um, just little universal joints. Comes down here to this universal joint and then goes up into the front. And I actually did splurge a little bit, bought a $160 uh, rack for the front. Uh, it is kind of important to have good steering. <laughs> so, so it works. It works really well. So I really like that rack and pinion. Now, everybody that watches my videos, they put out, they put uh, comments on uh, about uh, the trouble with the heating of the engine, how super hot it gets. And it does get super hot. And in my engine, in my carts that the engines are behind me, you know, that's not, not too much of an issue. And, uh, but this one is in front of me, obviously, and directly under me. And you'd think that, wow, I'm going to have a big problem because that engine is running at 1200 degrees. Well, I don't have a problem with that. And the reason I don't is because this aluminum shield I've got here, it's 6061 T6. So it's, it's structural aluminum, but it's real thin. It's only 16th of an inch. And I, I just space it off of the pipe. See up under there where I've got some ribs that space it off the pipe. It's only an inch and a quarter. But when this thing is running, when I'm going out through the desert or down the road or whatever, and I'm going, you know, anything over 25 or 30 miles an hour, enough air blasts through here and it's open down underneath. It'll blast up through there and down through the bottom. And that keeps the, uh, that keeps the heat off really well. You can't just fire it up and just let it set for like two minutes running wide open and uh, then that will you know overheat your your um, your shielding of course but when I'm going down the road I will literally have my legs right against the sides here and on my different uh, motorcycles and, and bicycles and stuff I have my leg laying right on that pipe and it doesn't get hot enough to even have to uh, have to pull my leg off so um, the heating issue is, is not a problem. Now you see uh, in like my valveless uh, beast cart, uh, the engine is glowing really, really red and then orange and then it actually turns white. Well, it actually doesn't turn white. Uh, the camera is sensing the heat and, and it sees it as light. So the engine's not actually glowing, uh, you know, white hot, the, like the surface of the sun <laughs> and gonna melt down or anything. And I've never had a, I've never had a engine, you know, deform or uh, fall apart. I've never had a weld crack or anything like that from the heat. So the heating issue, um, it's not there as long as you manage it very well. And that's what I do. And so, all this heat shielding uh, keeps me keeps me nice and safe. Um, in the winter time, a lot of time when I'm over at the dry lake bed, it's really cold. Sometimes it's uh, five or six degrees or 17 degrees or something like that. And on those occasions, it is really nice to have a nice heater <laughs> as you're flying out through the desert. 
So uh, let's see, what do we got here? So we got, we got some Hoosier tires. We got 10-inch um, rims, 18-inch tall tire. And in the back here, what I did, because I'm, you know, I'm trying to save money as much as I can, so I bought some just uh, off Amazon. Uh, these are uh, front brakes and hubs for a, um, you know, like a four-wheeler. And so I've got disc brakes there. And so those were cheap. And then I, uh, I just took and, and welded up. It, you know, I, as you can see, it's a hardtail. I don't have any suspension under it. Um, but that, so that's what, I, that's what I did in the back for that. Of course, just like I was saying about the steering, just a little cheap steering wheel there. Um, just a bucket seat. I don't have my uh, belts in it right now. Um, but here's something. So you might be wondering what a weird contraption this is. Where on earth did you come up with something that looks like this? And uh, well, I it was inspired. So I'm a, I'm a product of the 1960s and 70s. And in the 60s and 70s, there was something called a fuel altered. And they were the craziest dragsters on the drag strip. Everybody came to see them because they were completely out of control. They were pretty much just a, a tea bucket with a 3000 horse nitro engine in it. And uh, just imagine how crazy that dude is. See, he's crossing the finish line. His wheels are right at the line and those butterflies are still wide open. <laughs> it's my kind of guy. So as you can see, uh, big front engine that uh, the engine was way up off the ground. So that's where my inspiration for this uh, machine came from. So uh, let's see. So right now, um, I'm just getting ready to, actually I've got everything done on the engine and the fuel system and the air. So I'm ready to take it out and fire it. Now what I'll do first, as you can see right down here, I've got my, uh, my air wires and my fuel pump wires. I've just got them loose right here because I'll take it out on my trailer and I'll get it all set up and I'll uh, touch it off and make sure that, that the thing is running right. Now I have bent the engine here and, and that's, that isn't an issue as long as you don't bend one too tight. Now I've bent engines like this uh, before with a lot less bend in it and had no problem. And I know I won't have any problem with this, but I just wanna make sure that my fuel system now, I've got few, three fuel pumps on it. So I think that will take me up to about full throttle on this. And, uh, but I have to, you know, every you know, pumps uh, a lot of times pump at different pressures and everything. So I gotta make sure that at top end, I've got to pretty close to, to um, full power. Now I'll know because if, if it's too much fuel, the engine will go all the way up in power and then all of a sudden it'll instantly die. It's not like a piston engine where uh, with a piston engine, if you go too rich, uh, all of a sudden you'll just start losing power and it might start coughing and that kind of stuff. Uh, well, these engines don't do that. They start instantly and stop inst instantly. So if I give it too much fuel, it will instantly die. But then I know exactly where I was on my throttle. And so I'll just back it down a little bit and. And then I, uh, I won't put it out from being too rich. And then, of course, I also have to find the setting on the bottom end, too. So, um, yeah, so the next video that uh, I'll come out with here just real shortly is uh, I'll take her out. Uh, I'll probably take her out to the desert just because I love driving down there. And, uh, and I'll fire it up down at the desert, get it down on the ground. Now, another cool thing about this engine is, is see that pipe? It's, that's got supersonic air and, and a big huge shock waves comes out of that. And it's gonna throw a massive roost out the back. It's gonna, it's gonna look super, super cool. That's, that's a real, that's a nice advantage of having that pipe right down on the ground. And then after I get the, that testing done, then um, I'll finish everything. I haven't, I haven't I've gotta have some uh, place down here for my feet and put my throttle in. It'll just be a solid linkage and uh, let's get hook up my brakes and then uh, we'll get that thing powder coated and it's going to be beautiful all powder coated and all this heat shielding here see all that heat shielding that gets all polished out like a mirror now your the engine itself the stainless steel here it as soon as it starts running it'll immediately turn blue and then it'll go to it'll turn keep turning colors until it goes black and so it doesn't look that nice after it's been run a little bit 
but the, uh, the big uh, shiny heat shielding will stay nice and bright. So that's gonna be really cool. So I guess we've kind of gone over everything. So thanks a lot for stopping by. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.